Welcome back to Creepy Crawler's Garage for another daily update. And you've probably noticed the daily updates aren't quite daily. And well, they're not gonna be. I've got so much work going on in the shop right now that I just can't take the two or three hours or so it takes to film one of these every day out of the work I gotta get done in the shop. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do these almost daily. So basically at least two to three times a week, we'll still get an update. Um, I'm still going to call them the daily updates, but it's only going to be about two or three times a week. But we've got a mechanism wheel that we've been working on and we need to take a look at that in the garage. So sit tight for a quick opener. When we get back, we'll take a look at it. Don't go anywhere. In the futuristic world that we're building for the cinematic series we're gonna be filming in December, we decided to turn this Jeep Cherokee into a taxi slash scrapper service called Zuber Scrap and Ride. And for this uh, Jeep or this Zuber Scrap and Ride vehicle, we decided to do some mechanism wheels. Um, and so that's what I've been working on is putting together the mechanism wheels that we're gonna use on this Jeep. I think it'll look kind of futuristic and uh, just a little different, I guess, for the for the, the taxi slash uh, scrapper service here so what I thought we'd do we take a quick look at how these these wheels go together So there are some issues we're gonna to have to address with these wheels, starting with the hex drive that I had uh, set these up with. So I had changed them over to use a hex drive because originally I thought I was gonna use this uh, on just some regular axles on a regular chassis um, and, the, and the wheels themselves would just be aesthetic. They would just look the part. They wouldn't actually function like true mechanism wheels, but we've decided to go with another route where we're gonna actually power each wheel with its own motor so we can utilize these as you should a mechanism wheel and each one will be powered. Um, so what I think I'm gonna have to do is change these over uh, to a set screw system. So either completely reprint the wheels or the hubs that is uh, with a set screw setup or do some kind of adapter for the for the hexes. Now I might go ahead and just do the, the, the first way where we change it over to a set screw setup because if you noticed in the video we just watched, um, when I installed the bearings, basically each housing cracked right here on the outside. So essentially these housing were literally just about a half mil too small. Um, so if I go ahead and reprint this for set screws, I can open up these housings about a half millimeter larger. Basically what that's doing, it's, it's taking up the slack for the inaccuracy of my printer is what it's doing. Um, and then I think those bearings will fit in without cracking the housing. Now, they, they are actually very strong. We could leave them. Basically, I went back and put a little drop of CA glue in there, and it's actually very strong. I think they'd be fine for our purposes, but if we're gonna reprint it for uh, a set screw anyways, might as well just fix that up. So I think we'll go ahead and do that. Now, also with the rollers, they printed out actually very nice, and I think they're gonna be perfect. The only problem is they're just PLA, PLA plastic, so they're, they're kind of hard and slick, and if we power these, Basically, it's gonna turn Zuber Scrap and Ride into a drift car. These things are just gonna slide everywhere. So I've actually got some rubberized spray paint that I think what I'll do is I'll spray these rollers with uh, to give them a little bit of traction so they won't slip and slide so much. Uh, and also, I kind of installed them backwards. And when I say that, I mean I installed the hardware backwards. I think the screw heads look way better than the, than the nut side. So, and this is the outside of the wheel. So what I think I'm gonna do is switch the screw heads to this side and the nuts this way. Basically just flip the hardware back, uh, 
flip the hardware around. And speaking of this being the outside of the wheel, I am also gonna print up some wheel faces that we'll, that we'll glue on here or attach uh, onto the outside of the wheel to give it a finished look, basically give it a, a look of a wheel. Um, and I'll try to give it some kind of, come up with something, some kind of a futuristic pattern for the wheel to still give it a futuristic look, but a finished look with a wheel on the outside. But anyways, I think this is, uh, a very good first attempt. I think, and I, actually, I think this would work as is if we were to use a hex drive. They, uh, it's actually, you know, with the hardware, with eight sets of hardware and eight bearings, speaking of these bearings work, make this work so much smoother. Most of these you, you buy on Amazon or whatever, they're, they're just bushings, uh, especially the cheaper ones, the ones that are like 50 bucks a set or so, it's just bushings in there. Uh, it's a little pricier, it cost me about $50 just for the bearings, um, but, they work so much smoother. I think it's gonna be a better way to go. And with eight sets of bearings and eight sets of hardware, this thing's actually got some weight to it. So it's gonna give it a, a pretty planted, I think it's gonna give it enough weight to really plant this car to the ground. And it's gonna work real well for us. Um, and I think it's a great first attempt. And this really will work as is. I think we just need to make a few uh, few adjustments. But let me know what you think uh, about the wheel so far, about the mechanism wheel so far down in the comments below. Let me know, one, if you still like the direction going. Two, do you like the yellow? I think the yellow has got, I forgot to mention that I painted them yellow uh, for the taxi. I don't know if I'll do the, the wheel faces themselves also yellow. Maybe that'll be, we'll do in a chrome or silver. Uh, in fact, that's probably what I'll do. I'll do it silver or maybe even black. I'm not sure. Let me know what you think down in the comments, but uh, I think the yellow is going to look good for it being on a taxi. Let me know what you think. Before we move on, I do want to just real quickly explain how a mechanism wheel, wheel works for those of you out there that don't understand why we would want to power each wheel independently. So I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to throw a chart up right here and we can kind of take a look at how this works. So you can see the rollers on the wheels align in an X or basically they point to the center of the chassis. So what happens when you give power to a wheel, it doesn't actually create linear motion. It's going to actually create an angular motion. So the wheels up front are actually going to try to push in into the center of the vehicle and the wheels in the back are gonna try to push to the outside of the vehicle. Now what happens if you power them all forward, they counteract each other and the vehicle moves forward or, or vice versa, the vehicle will move backwards. But now if you power the wheels on each side opposite of each other, so the say like and you see in the chart, the, the, the wheels on the left, you power to the front and the back and the, and the wheels on the right, you power to the center, it's gonna give sideways motion. So it'll move to the right or it'll move to the left. And you don't have to turn any of the wheels. You don't have, uh, a, 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 a front steering rack that's turning the wheels, you're just using the power of the wheels to create motion in the vehicle. And you can see through the chart that no, how you power each wheel, it'll make different motions like to on an angle or it'll make it turn in a, a in a curve or just straight in a 360, like a zero turn uh, lawnmower. It'll just turn on a on the center axis of the vehicle in a 360. Um, but you can get it to do all kinds of cool movements just by powering each of the four wheels Different, differently, giving them power, not giving them power, and powering them in a different direction. Now with this, that means you have to create a controller. So I have to create a controller that's gonna control all four of these mo motors. And when I say controller, I don't mean the normal radio like we use, an actual controller. And what I'll probably power it with or, or use is an app on a cell phone. And I'll actually power it with a cell phone and it'll go to a controller that's, power, that's controlling the power to each wheel. Anyways, that's the point in the mechanism wheels. And what makes it kind of cool is to be able to move the vehicle around in all kinds of uh, directions, not just forward and then turn like we think of a regular vehicle. But anyways, let me know what you think about this down in the comments section. And don't go anywhere. We're gonna take a quick break for some commercials, but when we come back, I got a new segment we're doing, we're calling Next Time, so don't go anywhere. Calling this new segment next time because I wanted to give you a sneak peek of what you'll be able to see next time that's gonna be completed. We're not gonna be doing these daily updates daily or as often anymore. So I wanted to give you, I guess, a little teaser as to what'll be coming or will be finished up for the next daily update. But we'll get to take a look at it in the early stages. And then in the next update, when we come back, it'll be completed and you can see it completed. So let's go ahead and head into the garage and look what's up for next time. The apocalyptic world we're building is not only going to have the vehicles we're building in it, but it's going to be an entire city. We've got to build all the buildings within city blocks, huge sets for our vehicles to drive through as we film. Um, and I wanted to start with something that we had already talked about, which was Willie's Bar and Grill. And I was going to start by building the signage for that, because uh, basically any cyberpunk world, because this is going to be a, a, a cyberpunk world that's set in an apocalypse, right? Um, and any cyberpunk world 
the whole world setting is, is, is set by the lighting and the lighting comes from all the signs and all the neon. So I think I'm going to use Willie's Bar and Grill as a, a test bed, as a way to test how we're going to do all this lighting. So what I did is I went ahead and built out or worked out uh, the, the, the lettering for the signage. So basically I'm going to 3D print them. You can see here I've done a 3D model uh, for the lettering. And then what I did on the back is I added some standoffs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this standing standing off of the sign about, it's about five mil, about five millimeters. I think it's actually six millimeters. And I'll be able to backlight it. So what I'll do, and if you remember right, we're going to have Willie that's mounted up there next to it. So Willie will be mounted up there next to it. I think I'll have the signage here that's backlit. And then I'll frame it in some neon, I think, that'll go around this way. Uh, something to that effect. Of course, if you have ideas for that, let me know down below. But I think that'll be a good way if we'll have a nice light of backlight uh, that'll give some light and then we'll have some neons to give some color. I think that'll look pretty good. And then of course, we're going to have Willie mounted up there next to it. Now, here's the kicker. I don't want Willie to just be mounted up there stagnant. So here's what I'm thinking I'm going to do. I want Willie mounted up there and I, we're, I'm still thinking about mounting him on a, on a crankshaft or something to that effect. I don't know. Um, but what I do want to happen is is I want Willie's head to move. So what I want is his head to oscillate back and forth. So as the sign's glowing, uh, you know, with neon, his head's gonna be moving back and forth just like this, um, just constantly, just always doing that. Now, the question is, how do we make that happen? How do we make his head oscillate, oscillate, oscillate like a personal fan, like a fan you have in the house? And so I, I thought about a few different methods or a few different mechanisms. You can put it on a motor uh, and then use basically like a wiper blade setup. It's uh, basically a piston that's on a loop uh, that goes up and down and then it forces, you know, when it turns, it forces that loop to go back and forth like a wiper blade setup. A uh, little big, a little cumbersome. I also thought about doing a four bar mechanism, uh, which is actually what an oscillating fan uses. It's just basically a four bar mechanism. You mount one of the bars, you spin it, and it makes it kind of the bars go in a loop like this, but one of the uh, one of the joints will go back and forth. And I think I'd have to make it too small. I get too fragile. Uh, I just thought I didn't think that would really work. So what I decided to do was again use a micro servo, and I'm just going to power it with a little nano board. So basically I picked up uh, a little nano controller board um, that we can use and I'll use this to control the servo. I've got some script I'm gonna use that'll set it uh, to basically oscillate from zero to eight, 180 degrees and I'll probably adjust that. Uh, I don't know what endpoints we'll use. Zero to 100 might be a little too far uh, so I can adjust the script, but I think that's how I'm gonna control it. It's just a micro server off of a little nano board um, to control his head and let it turn back and forth. And I think that will be a really cool board, a really cool signage. Um, so that like if our our heroes of the show pull in, it's the end of end of an episode, they pull in to go get a drink at Willie's Bar and Grill. They walk in and there's Willie up above the door with his head turning back and forth, a bunch of neon. I think it'll look really good. Let me know what you think down below. But anyways, this is for next time. So give me those comments so I can see them. When I, so when I finish this up, any comments you have, I can use those comments in creating the signage. But let me know what you think down below. Thanks for joining me for another daily update here in the garage. Let me know what you think about the new format where we do a finished project uh, and there's a little bit of a build, build video involved in the finished pro project. And then there's a next time segment where we're going to see what we're going to take a look at next time. Let me know what you think about that format. And thank you for all the support on this series. I really do appreciate it. I'm sorry that I'm not going to be able to do this five days a week for right now. I've just got, I've got two, I've got to get the Grinch build done. Uh, I've got other builds I've got to get done for outside of the CCG 3000 AD series. I've got all these other builds I need to get done. I just need the time to do them. I really do apologize for these not actually being daily, uh, but I'm going to make them as daily as possible. Like I said, two to three times a week, but thank you for the support. Hit the like button if you enjoyed or do hit the like button. It really does help out the videos. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you want to keep up with these uh, and you want to keep up with the series that's coming up in December. Uh, and let me give me all those comments down below and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.